Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Samar Ajawi. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa held a meeting on Thursday at Sharm el Sheikh with the President of Egypt, Abdel Fattah al Sisi, where they discussed means of bolstering historic and fraternal ties between the two friendly countries, in addition to regional and international affairs of common concern, as well as developments in the region. His Majesty the King expressed thanks and appreciation to the Egyptian president for the invitation to visit Egypt and for the warm welcome and generous hospitality. His Majesty the King expressed pride in the close fraternal bonds and long-standing historical relations between the two countries that are further solidified and developed thanks to the continuous care and the common will of the two countries and their keenness to advance cooperation and coordination on all issues, making it a model of cohesion and solidarity. His Majesty the King noted the efforts and steps taken by Egypt under the leadership of President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi in all fields and the completion of major national projects and pioneering development initiatives capable of bringing about a major development and providing an inspiring experience in achieving sustainable development. His Majesty the King review, renewed Bahrain's supportive stance towards Egypt and Sudan and its support for all that preserves its legitimate rights and water security in the waters of the Nile River as well as all the efforts to reach an agreement to resolve the issue of the Renaissance Dam in a way that guarantees Egypt's right to its water share in the Nile River and benefits all parties in accordance with the rules of international law. The two parties affirm the importance of cooperation on peace in the Middle East and finding a just, lasting and comprehensive peace between the Palestinians and Israelis as per the two-state solution in order to serve the security, peace and stability of the region and meet the aspirations of the people of the region for development and prosperity. They also affirmed support for the Saudi Peace Initiative to stop the war in Yemen and to arrive at a political solution there. His Majesty the King referred to the situation in Afghanistan and the importance of securing peace and stability for its people and affirmed the efforts of the Kingdom in offering humanitarian relief. He extended an invitation to the Egyptian President to visit the Kingdom, which was accepted. For his part, the Egyptian President welcomed His Majesty the King and praised his efforts in enhancing the bilateral ties and expressed appreciation for His Majesty's position on Egypt and his appreciation for it and its people. He looked forward to the continued development of the bilateral ties in the service of the two countries and people. And His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa arrived in Egypt yesterday at the invitation of the Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi. Upon arrival at Sharm el-Sheikh International Airport, His Majesty was welcomed by President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi. During the visit, His Majesty will hold talks with the Egyptian President on the deep-rooted bilateral ties in addition to the latest regional developments. Among those who welcomed His Majesty the King were the Chief of the President's Office, Major General Ahmed Ali, Chief of Egypt's General Intelligence Service, Major General Abbas Kamal, Bahrain's Ambassador to Egypt, Hisham bin Mohammed al Jodar, the official spokesman for the Presidency of the Republic, Ambassador Bassam Radi, and a number of senior officials. The first Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, Chairman of the General Sports Authority and President of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received at his office in Al Wadi Palace, Chairman of the Board of Directors of the National Bank of Bahrain, Mr. Farooq Yusuf Al Mu'ayyad. His Highness welcomed the Chairman of the Board of Directors of NBB and praised the efforts made by the bank in strengthening community partnership through its sponsorship and support for various activities and events. His Highness also hailed the NBB for sponsoring His Highness's initiatives, as this was reflected in the achievements of the goals set by His Highness through these initiatives, which would contribute to strengthening efforts for progress and development of Bahraini society. For his part, the Chairman of the Board of Directors of NBB lauded the great efforts made by His Highness Sheikh Khalid in translating the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to advance the youth and sports sectors in the Kingdom, stressing that the pioneering initiatives launched by His Highness reflects his keenness and interest in supporting the youth and developing the sports system. Mr. Al Mu'ayyad expressed honor in supporting such initiatives as it enhances the bank's role in achieving community partnership and serving the Kingdom's prosperity and advancement. Since 1980, the National Bank of Bahrain has been investing in the community in areas of education, healthcare, social activities or social welfare, projects, youth and sports. So to listen to His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa praise the bank's efforts 
and, and investment in this community over the past decade was really thrilling. It allowed us the opportunity to see the fruits of the sustainable framework that we've put together. It allowed us to realize how much important and how much we're on the right track with regards to investing in such programs. Now, His Highness also talked about the different projects that he has in mind with regards to philanthropic activities, uh, charitable organizations, youth, the national sports, as well as people of determination, which are areas that the bank has always been investing in. So it gave us the opportunity to explore different avenues of cooperation between us and all these programs allow us to have a, a, a I would say, a nurtured, uh, cohesive society or community that we all live in, all contribute to the kingdom's welfare. The President of the Supreme Council of Health and Chairman of Bahrain Diabetes Society, Lieutenant General Dr. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, inaugurated Bahrain Obesity Academy Conference organized by the BDS in cooperation with the Ministry of Health, the King Hamad University, Hospital and the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland. The conference is the first medical conference held in person since the outbreak of the coronavirus and is being held according to the precautionary health measures that are consistent with the alert signal in line with the directives of the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus. The SCH president delivered a speech in which he affirmed that the Kingdom of Bahrain's endeavor to fight obesity as a top priority in the national plan to achieve the sustainable development goals and reduce premature death from non-communicable diseases by 2030. He also highlighted the Kingdom's efforts to fight overweight under a national scheme that includes a wide range of measures like physical activity, health nutrition, establishing specialized clinics, promoting healthy lifestyles. More than 150 participants are taking part in the conference, which is seen as an encouraging step for the return of such conferences in the future. The conference is emphasizing the danger posed by obesity on people's health and on exhausting health care resources. The Minister of Foreign Affairs and Chairman of the current GCC session, Dr. Abdel Latif bin Rashid Azagani, chaired the joint ministerial meeting between GCC foreign ministers and the Minister of Foreign Affairs and Expatriates of Yemen, Ahmed Awad bin Mubarak, on the sideline of the 149th session of the GCC Ministerial Council. The Minister gave a statement expressing the GCC country's firm support for the legitimate leadership in Yemen, led by President Abdurab Mansour Hadi and their determination to continue supporting the legitimate leadership to achieve the aspirations of the Yemeni people for peace, security, stability and prosperity. He took pride in the great efforts made by the coalition led by Saudi Arabia to support Yemen legitimacy, defend the sovereignty, independence and safety and unity of Yemen and deter the ongoing attacks by the Houthi terrorist militia on Saudi civilians and civilian objects. He stressed the importance of a political solution to the crisis in accordance with the approved references. Dr. Azayani said the continuation of the Yemeni crisis with its tragedies and pains is due to the insistence of the Houthi terrorist group who want to bring under their control a number of Yemeni governorates committing many vicious attacks and violations. He commended the generous initiative announced by Saudi Arabia last March on a ceasefire in Yemen under the UN supervision to reach a political solution to the crisis. He called on the Yemeni brothers to implement the Riyadh Agreement, shun differences, work with the agreed mechanisms, give priority to the high interest of the Yemeni people, halt the bloodshed, and bridge the rift between Yemeni components. For his part, Dr. Ahmad Awad bin Mubarak stressed that the, since the Houthi coup against the legitimate authority, Yemen has been going through the worst political security and economic crisis in its contemporary history. He said the GCC brothers have realized the danger of the Iran-backed Houthi coup and its repercussions on the region, and therefore the coalition to support legitimacy. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif Azayani, chaired the joint ministerial meeting with the Foreign Minister of Iraq, Dr. Fuad Hussein, on the sideline of the GCC Ministerial Council. The Minister of Foreign Affairs delivered a speech in which he explained that the ministerial meeting comes in implementation of the directives of their majesties and highnesses, the leaders of the GCC states. He added that the GCC leaders are keen on strengthening their strategic partnership with Iraq based on the strong historical relations and common destiny. He affirmed the GCC stand towards preserving Iraq's sovereignty, independence, unity and territorial integrity 
and their non-interference in its internal affairs, stressing the need to support Iraq's security and stability to help it confront violence, extremism, and terrorism of all forms and manifestations. He also noted the need to work on enhancing the pace of cooperation to confront these challenges in a manner that serves the interest of both sides. He expressed his appreciation for the efforts made to complete the strategic electricity project. For his part, Dr. Fuad Mohammed Hussein indicated that Iraq is keen on alleviating in light of the current challenges in the region. The Speaker of the Arab Parliament, Adil bin Abdul Rahman al Assoumi, affirmed that the visit of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al Khalifa to the Arab Republic of Egypt and his meeting with President Abdel Fattah al Sisi underscores the role of His Majesty to strengthen relations and coordination between the Kingdom of Bahrain and Arab countries in a manner that serves Arab interests. Al Assoumi stressed that this visit reflects the constant keenness of His Majesty to enhance security and stability in the region and emphasize the Kingdom's honorable positions regarding the promotion of joint Arab action. He also stated that the visit reflects the closely knit Bahraini Egyptian relations, which represent the model at the level of inter Arab relations. Al Assoumi stressed that the united visions and viewpoints of the leaders of the two countries represent one of the main pillars for achieving security and stability in the region, praising the firm stances of the Egyptian president regarding the security of the Gulf and rejecting any practices that seeks its destabilization. The Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities and the United States of America Embassy in the Kingdom of Bahrain in collaboration with the American Film Showcase concluded a virtually creative workshop titled The Effective Use of Animation in Documentary Films. The three-day event was conducted by internationally renowned director and illustrator Mikey Duziage from 13th to the 15th of September. During the workshop, Mr. Duziage talked about animation and its most notable aspects using classic and contemporary examples of how it's used in telling stories from redesign into infographics to abstraction. The workshop also addressed how participants can create animated snippets that serve as a powerful visual, emotional, and communicative language. Participants learned how to create audio and audiovisual clips and other design elements. The workshop concluded with a discussion on visual motifs and sound design for a more sophisticated end product, as well as how to tell compelling stories with or without high-end production equipment. Director uh, Mikey Duziage is a well-known Hollywood animator whose works mainly revolve around the sports world. Many of his documentaries have been nominated for Emmy Awards and have premiered at prestigious international film festivals. He has earned a place in Variety magazine as one of the top 10 documentary makers to watch. He is the director of the original Netflix documentary series Losers and the shining star of Losers Everywhere. His other works also include You Don't Know Boo and OJ Made in America. The media organization he worked with include Rolling Stone, The New Yorker, New York Times Magazine, Vice Tennis, and ESPN. The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents across the kingdom. The Ministry of Health announced that 1,159,722 Residents and citizens took the first dose of the vaccine when 1,102,610 had taken the second dose and 270,547 had taken the booster dose. The ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of active coronavirus cases reached 878 with 98 recoveries, 64 registered new cases and no deaths. 33 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 28 are contacts of active cases and 3 are travel related. The Ministry urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus. <laughs> 